Well, hey everybody, I am back from Philmont. We made it. Well, today we're gonna to talk about what worked and what didn't work with regards to our gear. And if you're new to the channel, this channel is all about backpacking, outdoor adventures, and gear, most definitely gear, and a few tips and tricks along the way. So if any of those things interest you, consider subscribing because then you'll be alerted every time I post new content, and there is a lot of new content coming. So sit back and relax, and let's dive right in. Andy here, and thanks for joining me today. We are gonna be going through all of my Philmont gear. Uh, now that we've uh, done the trip, come back, analyzed it, what did I use, what did I not use, what worked, what didn't work, what would I change? Are there any changes I'd make? Let's go through all of that now. All right, so this is it, all laid out nice and pretty. Um, this is what I took to Philmont, um, almost completely identical to my final video. I think I threw in one or two items um, in the final day or two before we left. So I will go through everything um, kind of one by one so that you can follow along and see what, what I took and then what worked and what didn't work and, and why I might make some changes um, to, this, to this final list. So this is my pack, Z-Pax Arc Blast 55 liter pack. I was a little concerned because it's probably borderline of capacity for both weight and uh, volume. Um, it's a little probably small. Um, a lot of the recommendations are for you know 75 liter packs and up. Um, so at 55 liters, um, I knew I'd be um, pushing the envelope a little bit. Now this one's waterproof. So unless I get tears in it, um, my stuff's gonna stay dry. But as a backup, I brought a Nilo Flume pack liner, um, the clear bag that goes inside of it. That way I could keep um, my down bag and, and anything else that I wanted to keep dry, dry. Um, this is a big recommendation of mine. Um, a lot of the boys brought pack covers to keep the rain off the outside. Um, and found out that they are not foolproof and the stuff inside their pack still got wet. Um, so the boys that did bring a pack liner and a um, pack cover kept their stuff dry. Now, this is also, um, I put a, the hefty trash compactor bags. Um, that's what my son used and a couple of the other boys that I recommended. Um, brought that instead of the Nilo Flume. So that's an easy economical thing that you can pick up at Walmart or wherever. So that's my first tip is use a pack liner. That um, is worth its weight in gold. Um, I brought the uh, Z-Pax Triplex uh, for me and one of the other dads. So that was our um, sleep system that worked great. Um, we had no water issues. Um, short of one night, we had some condensation when it was really raining hard. Um, I had to get my um, towel out and uh, dry off the inside of the uh, of the tent a couple times just to make sure um, we were staying dry. Um, I brought a ground sheet, um, polycryo, um, just the window film kind of stuff, a five by seven sheet, and my stakes. I, I highly recommend bringing a ground sheet. Um, this tent doesn't require it, um, but I would use it um, just as a little extra protection because it is really rocky out there in spots. And on the flip side, in the morning, then I would lay that ground sheet out and lay all my stuff on it um, so I could organize it to get it back in my pack and go. So having that as just a, you know, a, a place to lay all my stuff out was invaluable. Uh, and then I had my trekking poles, which were used with my tent for the shelter. Um, my down bag, it's a 20 degree um, quilt. I found that every night, but probably two, it was overkill. Um, especially down low, elevations 8,000 and under. Um, you know, it might have been 60 degrees at night. Uh, a couple different times. You'd wake up sweating. So you really had to vent um, as best you can with that. Um, 
but there were two nights that we had um, rainy and cold um, where it was probably 40 degrees outside and um, I was extremely comfortable in that bag. So now could I have gotten by with a 30 degree bag? I probably could have um, and just use um, you know sleeping clothes, thermals, um, and other clothes that I could layer um, just to save a little weight. That's a possibility. Um, and we had a camp around 10,000 feet and it was pretty chilly that night so um, I was still very comfortable in this bag so I think you probably can get away with that. I'd probably say if you're um, doing a quilt um, and you've got enough gear um, you could probably get by with it. To me, it wasn't that big of a weight penalty and the bag worked great. So I, I would probably keep a 20 degree quilt. Um, if you've got um, camps that are, you know, high elevation, 10,000 plus, if you're, you've got a couple that are over 11,000, um, you're probably going to like that. So depending on the trek, um, that's something to think about. Um, I wouldn't switch anything else. My sleep system was great. Uh, the Nemo uh, Tensor Insulated um, Regular Wide was about as comfortable as I could be. Plenty of insulation for, for what we did. Um, I'm going to switch out my pillow just because the Snug Pack is a little too thin. I ended up using that with my clothing bag to uh, give me a little more plump of a pillow. Um, but later on down the road, that's something that, that I'll switch. But Overall, it, it worked great. Uh, my toiletry bag, uh, my son and I kind of um, switched off back and forth, um, carrying that every day. Um, I did go through some Luco tape. I went through a ton of Advil. Um, uh, we used a one pack of Adventure Cream for some chafing issues um, on the crew, so I, I donated that to uh, one of the other dads. Um, you know, there were a couple items that I, I did not use. I, I definitely did use the uh, the DEET. Um, I hear that's pretty rare out there, but with as wet as it's been, um, having a couple of those uh, throughout the crew um, definitely was useful. There were bugs that were present, mosquitoes at night, um, that, uh, that just allowed us to be a little bit more comfortable. They weren't crazy, um, but they were present. You, you noticed them, so having some DEET um, that you could throw on um, on those evenings and depending on locations if it was kind of marshier wetter areas we were up in the Valle um, and there were a couple spots where it was pretty waterlogged um, so the mosquitoes were a little more common up there than um, some of the other spots that we were at. Um, I definitely use the body glide and the foot powder um, really frequently. Um, one thing I didn't use I did not use um, my light load towel. Um, I just found that using my buff um, took the place of that. So that might be something next time that I, I don't bring another towel if I've got a buff. I use that to wash my feet, to wash my body, and then I'd rinse it out in the water stops um, and wear it when, when needed. But uh, um, that was probably one item in the kit that I didn't use. Obviously I've got Imodium and Tums. I used a couple Band-Aids. Um, nothing big and I've got a little repair kit didn't didn't have to use that um, but everything else pretty much I, I don't know that I would change I brought um, an extra 50 foot of cordage um, we hung um, clothes lines a, a few different times um, and everybody kind of got their paracord and uh, line out so um, that came in handy I didn't use my lighter uh, I don't know that you'd probably need more than about three or four of those uh, per crew. I did use my pocket knife a couple different times for opening stuff and I um, gained a thing of tape. I borrowed that actually from one of the dads uh, to help tape up one of the boys um, who had uh, just blisters in a spot on his toe that you know a band-aid wasn't going to stay. We actually had to had to wrap it and then I ended up keeping that so I uh, didn't start with that one. But that I, w I wouldn't change. I, I had some uh, a trowel and some hand sanitizer. We did use that. Uh, I think there were three of us with trowels, um, so those came in, in handy. The day pack um, was definitely used. That was great, a three ounce. Um, that's an Osprey, um, kind of lightweight 
update pack that, that was great. Uh, the headlamp was great. Uh, the battery banks um, worked great. I also have a solar charger that I brought um, and I was charging two battery banks off the solar charger and then using that to charge my phone and my headlamp and using the GPS and, and all that for navigation. Um, I was able to keep on top of all of that and keep all my batteries charged for my cameras. So uh, that worked worked phenomenally well. Um, the water system is, uh, I would change a little bit. So I had a couple ever new bags. Those are two liter bags. I had a Canuck bag. Um, I did bring a Sawyer squeeze and a plunger and I had the one liter bottle. I, I don't have it here. So I'm showing the smaller one, but I did have a one liter bottle of the smart water and that's a 20 ounce uh, Powerade um, for my smellables. Um, I liked having the liter bottle um, while I was hiking on trail though, I noticed that I would blow through that and then I'd have um, the two liter bottles that are in my side pouches in my pack. And when I'd stop, uh, I'd have to have somebody help me or I'd take the pack off and I would um, drink a little from those, but I'd really use those to pour into the smart water bottle and then go to the next, um, till the next break and drink out of that. So it was a little bit of extra work. Um, so I, what I would probably do is um, probably bring a bladder. I, I really would. Um, this might work uh, better um, in sections where you're coming in contact with more water more frequently, and then you need to have a couple dry camps where you can where you can load up. But what we found was, you know, you're going to have um, a hike for the day from one spot to the other and there's water when you left camp and there's water at the next camp and you probably um, might not see water the whole stretch in between so you know loading up uh, you know what I did have earlier was a three liter platypus and a couple of the guys had that and I just found that the ease of use that they had loading that up in the morning with with uh, three liters and then maybe having a water bottle for stops or lunch or whatever uh, made a lot of sense and then having the the smart water bottle at camp was super convenient just to walk around as you're eating dinner and you know you've got a water bottle to go to different programs um, so you know having the bladder only wasn't a solution um, and then the other thing that I would mention is on the Powerade I brought a 20 ounce um, bottle um, some of the drink mixes would be for the 16.9 ounce size and a couple of packs were the full Gatorade 32 ounce. So I did come into some issues of just trying to mix stuff properly in that. Um, one thing too that I may consider doing if I was to do it all over again is to take a 32 ounce Powerade or Gatorade bottle um, for my smellables instead of the 20 ounce um, just so that I could handle every different type of drink mix that we got. And like I said, they, they had different sizes, different packets every day that we were getting. Um, lemonades, uh, apple cider, um, acclimate, um, Gatorades, different flavors. So um, it, it worked pretty good for that, but there were definitely a couple of situations where um, it was the wrong size, it was too small, so I ended up just splitting some with my son and we'd make three bottles worth. Um, I'd take two thirds of a mix into that bottle, drink it, um, add the final third and the third of his packet into one, he'd drink it, and then we'd take the remaining two thirds into this one and split it. And, you know, it's a little extra hassle, but that worked fine. Um, the Sawyer Squeeze, there were two of us in the entire crew that brought a Sawyer Squeeze. Um, we ended up using them. We had a situation in the Valle where Ring Place um, was out of water. So they had a couple water buffalo um, trailers that um, were being restocked by maintenance. And when we pulled into camp, they said, we're sorry, they're dry. Um, there is a well on the south end of the property. You can hike all the way down to the well and then treat it. Um, and there's a creek that, that ran short, uh, just north of us um, past camp. So um, we just went to the creek and filtered the water and then treated it with with the tablet so we were able to filter out some of the particulates um, so it was a little clearer and then um, use the tablets so that just made it a little more pleasant 
Other than that, I don't know that we had a need for it. So we could have gotten by without it. Um, it did add a convenience one time, one day of the whole trip having that. So take that for what it's worth. Um, you know, maybe having one in the crew, you know, for a three ounce penalty, it's, it's not the end of the world, but, um, the water situation was usually pretty good everywhere. We went just about every camp had water, um, except for one. And the water was, you know, a well, um, it was treated. It was, you know, comes out of a spigot. You know, so one of those options is what we ran into. So getting by without a Sawyer squeeze was um, probably possible. Um, we did end up using it once, so you know, I may keep it in if I was to go back again, but I could totally see getting by without one. I would just know my route and um, know if, if that's gonna be something that is more likely or less likely to be used um, would be, make my decision for me, so. That's the water situation. Um, Capacity-wise was, was plenty good. I don't think I ever had more than about six liters that I was carrying, um, and that was for the dry camp the first night. Um, I found that having three to four liters um, when I left camp was usually plenty for me to get to the next either midday or to the final camp, um, the next water stop. You know, I, I would a lot of times drink two to three liters as we were hiking and then um, have a liter left or be about done when we got into camp and was able to resupply. So just know your distances, know your water stops um, and how much water you drink. Um, I, I brought some extra um, multiple days just because I was a parent and you know, I wanted to make sure if the boys ran out, I had some extra, um, maybe a little overkill. So four liters a day is, is um, enough capacity for me to get to the next stop um, most days. Um, my food kit was, was pretty basic. I had just a couple um, Tokes uh, titanium um, items. I had a, a mug and a bowl and a spoon, and that was about it. Um, I did bring that the top um, just to keep some stuff warm depending on uh, the mornings. I didn't didn't really feel that it was necessary, but it, it kept my gear together. Um, so that's something I, I may have left uh, behind and, and never missed. And then I had my coffee pack, which is just about empty now. I think I had you know, 12 uh, coffee packs, um, creamer, and some Splenda that I brought along. Um, every staffed camp that you get to, if you're there in the evening, they will have advisor coffee for you. So you can get a cup of coffee at night, um, and they had uh, packets of um, hot chocolate and tea bags and things like that. So if you wanted to take some for camp the next morning, you, you totally could. Um, but that was a nice uh, touch. I ended up with, with probably plenty um, for our trip. So even able to bring one or two home uh, was a plus. Um, I had the green bag is my um, food bag. So that would be my Smellables bag. So my first aid kit went in that bag every day. Any food that I was carrying went in that bag every day. Um, that went up in the bear bag at night, um, along with my like Smellable bottle and you know anything else that, that I may have that was, that was Smellable. And then I had the white bag was just my spare clothes bag. So I would fit um, you know a couple different items in there. Typically I'd have my thermals, um, I wore one of these two outfits. So there's a shirt, um, a gray shirt, and a blue shirt there. One's long sleeve, one short sleeve, and then one long sleeve pant and um, running shorts with a liner in them. So I would wear one of those two outfits um, every day, but I think two, I wore the long sleeve pants and the long sleeve shirt. And for me, it wasn't um, because of temperature, it was because of sun. Uh, I just found that the sun was so intense um, having long pants and a um, long sleeve shirt uh, was way more comfortable for me. Um, and it also allowed me to uh, not have to put on a ton of sunscreen all the time. So I typically wore those. And then a couple days I would wear the short sleeve shirt and the, uh, the running shorts. Um, one day in particular, I had washed um, both, of my, um, both of my underwears. And um, so I used the shorts 
just as my, uh, because they've got a liner, you don't need to wear underwear with them. So I could wear the shorts and the shirt um, while the other two dried. That was a great setup. I, I wouldn't change anything about that. For me, it worked great. Um, the thermals, I hiked um, one time as we were climbing Baldy, and to be honest, I wasn't that comfortable in them. So um, th definitely the bottoms, I, I would have not uh, done that, just left those aside. I had them for colder sleep uh, gear. Um, warmer nights, I just wore boxers and a t-shirt, and that's that was all. Um, I had a wool hat and gloves. I had uh, my buff. I had some flip-flops for just being around camp, sunglasses, and a hat, uh, wide-brimmed. Um, I also had a second hat that I brought, which was just a ball cap, just because I like to switch it up every once in a while. It was a little overkill until my son lost his wide-brimmed hat and wore my ball cap the rest of the trip. Um, so that came in handy, but that's my personal preference. Um, in most cases, having a wide-brimmed hat, a ball cap is, is plenty. The wide-brimmed hat, for me, worked a little better, again, just because of the intensity of the sun. Um, I had three pairs of Darn Tough, uh, just the short um, hikers, and um, one pair of um, Fox River. Those are just uh, sock liners that I typically wore um, for sleeping. So that was the only time that I wore those at all, and not every night, just on the on the cooler nights. Um, I had a Patagonia R1, and I had Mont Bell pants and jacket for rain gear. Um, I had some Dirty Girl gaiters that I wore with my um, Ultra Lone Peak 4s, um, which were great just to help keep the dust and rocks out of my shoes since they're you know kind of the low-cut uh, trail hiker. Um, style. Those worked great for me, had no issues anywhere. Um, they were outstanding. I was extremely comfortable. Uh, we had one day, uh, the one drawback is uh, we actually had uh, two days in a row where we had rain. So the first day, um, you know, letting things dry out by the next day, there was one time that they weren't dry um, completely by the next morning. But that day then we got a little bit of sun so by midday of hiking they were bone dry again so although some people had waterproof shoes the whole time and had no issues um, you know I had to deal with being being wet for a little bit of time um, not too bad though now I will say that my puffy jacket uh, my mountain hardware I only wore um, two or three times um, mostly uh, let's see two of those were mornings and one of them was an evening where we got soaked um, and uh, we had to strip out of our wet clothes and get into whatever we had that was warm. And I keep my puffy in my um, pack liner, um, in my pack with my down bag so that it, I know it's going to be dry. Um, and if it's rainy, I'm typically hiking if I'm cooler uh, um, in my synthetic, the Patagonia R1. Um, just because I, I like the hood, it's a little breathe, more breathable, and the issue, if it gets wet, um, it's still going to insulate you, whereas if the down gets wet, um, it's pretty much worthless. So I kept the down for when we got to camp and we got shelters up and we needed to change into clothes that was there. So the few times that I had to wear it because I was cold, I warmed up so fast in that that um, I ended up, you know, within half an hour taking it off because I was just so warm. Um, so uh, would I leave it at home? I, I wouldn't. Um, I found that the Patagonia, the R1, was my go-to gear of the trip. Um, that hoodie um, is light enough that, you know, on cooler mornings, cooler evenings, that was my main source of comfort. Having the hoodie, uh, it was just outstanding really really love that piece of kit and would highly recommend that to just about anybody um, the puffy was just again those cooler times um, when that wasn't enough I, I debated stopping on the climb to baldy um, because as we got onto the ridge line it was extremely windy up there and the r1 with the mont bell jacket on top um, and a long sleeve shirt and i was wearing my fleece top or my uh, thermal top just wasn't quite enough. Um, I had to keep moving to keep warm. 
So I was really debating whether to get the puffy out. Um, I ended up not, but just to give you an idea, there are some temperature changes when you get into those kind of mountain situations. So, oh, also uh, the chair. I, I loved having it with me. Um, I did not break it out on every um, break that we took, but I did break it out on multiple breaks that we took and I broke it out um, when we were stopping for lunch on trail. And every time we got into camp, um, we were pulling the chairs out. So that's it uh, in a nutshell. I, I was very happy with how everything uh, worked. Very few changes that I would make. Um, you know, I would consider making some changes with my water um, situation just to make it a little bit more convenient for the types of um, hikes that we had. Uh, I could see those being um, convenient, more convenient um, than the system that I had. But um, I had no issues. Um, really with with what we brought um, what was in my kit so just to summarize I was very very pleased with how my kit performed out in Philmont I was able to cover uh, a lot of different bases from wet weather colder weather hot weather uh, a whole range of things very few items that I would change I would definitely make some adjustments um, to my my water situation I think um, and just how I carried things um, uh, bringing a bladder potentially in a different um, Gatorade bottle or Powerade bottle. Um, I, I can't stress more. Have your kids, have the boys bring um, a pack liner in addition to a pack cover. Um, you're going to get wet out there. It's hard not to, um, especially if you go later in the season in the monsoon um, the season and, and the rainy days are much more common. Um, have that pack liner, bring dry bags, something like that so that they can make sure um, that their gear stays dry. Um, in, in mountain conditions, having dry gear um, can be the difference between um, a safe situation and a very dangerous situation. So um, I hope that was helpful. If it was, again, leave a like, uh, comment. Um, if there's any other questions that you may have too, leave those in the comments down below. I'm happy to share uh, what my experience uh, taught me. Um, if you have any questions about your upcoming trek, um, what you're thinking about doing, I'm, I'm happy to share my thoughts. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.